Thank you so much for so oh my God, this has been so long since I've done something like this. So I'm super excited to to be here and to really um help collate and bring the messages of a lot of amazing people across their known world um on how do we interact with newcomers in such a way where we can really mirror their and has, um, meet them at the level of kindness that they deserve and then make sure that we are constant ambassadors of respect um, as we move forward um, with recruitment, you know, from day to day. So um, during today's class, you will be hearing likely from me for sure. Hi, that's me, Summer Lidre. I'm on the far uh, right side of your screen. But then also we should have um, Baron Valdrick um, join us. He's excellent. Um, he is from Meridiers. And then we have uh, Master Richard, who is in the center. Um, he contributed a lot to the presentation of this material and to the slides. Um, he was hopeful to join today, but if he does not, that is okay. Um, I thought it was way more important to make sure that we reached out to some of the um, most amazing experienced individuals of our known world on with regarding welcoming newcomers and communicate that message rather than, you know, make sure that, you know, everybody, you know, compete, complies with schedules and stuff. So um, without further ado, I want to kind of just jump in. Here's the scenario. Okay. So a newcomer comes to a practice, an event, and a demo. Now what? Right. So there's a lot of anxiety that can happen for a chatelaine, a goal key, or to be, you know, honest, any SCA member of you notice that there's a new person who's standing there watching. Right. And it can be at anything. Right. The most common would be at a practice at a park. Right. Lots of people go to park. Lots of people stand and watch at a practice. Um it is also true with events and demos, and, and there's a lot of descriptions that can occur. There's a lot of variability that can occur um, on describing what the scenario looks like. But the basic one that we want to address is, now what? Right? They're there. You see them. Now what do you want to do? Okay, so let's break it down. Let's be a detective of enthusiasm, right? Not everyone who is at a park or with you in an event, like I found the SEA through uh, Phoenix Comic Con, right? There's a lot of people who are there. So how do you know when to approach someone and how do you know maybe when not to approach them, right? So this is what I teach my kids and what I have taught for years is as individuals, we have to be good detectives of enthusiasm. Um, and what that means is step one, you have to be very observant, okay? So you start to observe, are they just passing by? Are they standing there? Right. There's different behaviors that we have when people are on the sidelines of anything and they're watching. We have so many experiences of going to um, uh, like sports events or going to um, school events or college events. And you can see examples of what it looks like when people are just passing by or watching. When people are, are choosing to pass by, you'll notice that, A, they're always in motion even if they're standing, right? So somebody could be standing there, but they're, they're swinging their hands or they're kind of swinging their feet. Or you see that they'll stand and then move a few feet and then stand and then move a few feet, right? They're always doing something or they're interacting they're, they're moving at some level. So that's a pretty good indicator. Watching usually the hips and the arm, uh, the, the chest, the shoulders will be faced to what they are watching or directed towards what they are watching. And the more interested that they become in whatever they're watching, all of a sudden other body language signs start to come out. Okay, specifically open body language signs, right? Hands on hips, that's a really good sign, right? If their arms are up near their head, 
Okay, that's technically considered like a, the formal name is called arms akimbo. That's also a good sign. Those are very open body language for that that are welcoming other people to to come and and to speak to them. Arms wide open or palms up or arms at their sides, right? All of these are very approached open body language that individuals will give each other to be like, hey, I am. I have questions. I, I I want to interact. This is this is cool. Um, and again, the last uh, bullet point here on the open body language is into hips and chest pointed towards the thing that is holding their interest, right? Even if it subtly um, shifts. The cool thing is is that these. Oh, this open body language that is being communicated doesn't really shift if they're an individual watching or if they're in a group, right? So if you have a family, this was this happened very recently. Um, if you there's a family who sees, you know, some of the amazing fighter practice and an ANS display, um, as a family unit, you're going to see them engage with this body language, all from children all the way up through, you know, adulthood and and beyond. Um, and that's really a great way to help detect. Oh, you know. I think maybe I can go over there and introduce myself. This is this is a good thing. Now let's talk about closed body language. So closed body language is anything that is arms or legs crossed over the body and or hips and chest pointed away, like if, as if they're about to move away. So we all have experiences in our life when we're talking to someone and that someone turns almost at a right angle to our body, right? Their hips and their chest are not, no longer pointed towards us. They're pointed away right? That is a great and subtle and, and don't get me wrong, polite key of a closed body language saying, I need to move on, right? Like, I'm, I'm, I do not want to interact anymore. Let us, let us move on, right? So closed body language is, is definitely like if we, if we were to archetype it, it could be arms crossed in front of your body, legs crossed in any way, right? And it, Definitely, if you're seeing them about to move away, uh, okay, cool, that's all right. Even if you did approach and then you get closed body language, that is a perfectly fine thing to get, right? But being a detective of enthusiasm is step one, observing these things, right? And even if, as long as you are polite and, uh, well, kind, right, and respectful, which is the other two um, key features of this particular class, even if the enthusiasm that you observe is slightly incorrect, or maybe they are enthusiastic, they just may not want to talk right now, that's okay. You're still going to be polite. You're still going to have a positive interaction, and they still get to guide their own they still get to guide their own experience in a way that they are, they know is going to be respectful to them. Okay. Um, I just got a notification from one of my co-presenters that um, the Baron is on. Um, so, Valdrick, are you here with us? I haven't let him in yet. He needs to access the room. Oh, okay, cool. Then I will definitely tell him that he needs to access the room. Okay. All right. So the last thing that we want to talk about when you're being a detective of enthusiasm is listen to their language, right? So after you have decided to interact, right, um, you're probably going to say something super, super common, like, hi, my name is this. Welcome to our practice. Um, right? Listen to, to their words. Okay. Are they positive words? Are they excited words? Are they action words? Okay. The language that we use when we're, we're interacting on a first, uh, first impression basis is really going to give you a lot of the, the tools that you need to be a good detective of enthusiasm, right? If they're super positive words, like, wow, this is, this is unique. This is exciting. This is awesome. I'm, what is this, <laughs> right? Like those are all great positive language words that are excited. Um, and, and you can, it, it helps you to detect, oh, they really want some more information on this. This is really great. Action words, 
right? So we've all had that experience um, in the SEA to some degree with newcomers where they may not know how to ask to participate, but you see them trying to form the, the, the phrase on how do you ask to participate. The version of this for me when I was joining was is how do I participate with the fighters in the cage? Right. How do I get to fight in the cage? That was that was my action words of the key to enthusiasm for the very nice gentleman that I was speaking to. Um, and then that led us down a very obvious path of, oh, well, you have to go to fighter practice. Right. Like there's this you, you can't just pick up tool, you know, uh, weapons and then go into. The cage. Um, so. Listening to their language and really being with them and present in the moment is always key when you're being a detective of enthusiasm. So we've talked a lot about the positive words, the excited words, the action words. Those are really, really easy to pick up, right? But the human language is, oh, hi, Baldrick. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, those words are excellent words, and, but they're really easy to pick up. What about all of the in-between? Right. What about the the language that is not quite overly excessive in their enthusiasm, but the stuff that's right in the middle? Like, wow, I've never seen you guys here. Right. Like, that's a really great phrase that we hear all the time at the park. Or I guess I haven't noticed this before. OK, that's not necessarily a negative phrase. It's not necessarily an overly positive one either, but it, it is a statement and it is a statement of them engaging. So as a detective of enthusiasm, you would definitely take that particular statement and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, th this is when we're here. And, um, you know, sometimes schedule changes, but we're, we're really happy to be sharing this park with you or we're, we're really happy to be sharing this campus with you. Um, gosh, you have any questions, right? Or... Um, have you have you ever seen anything like this before? Okay. Um, a really good example of in the middle kinds of excited words or astonished words is, I'm not sure I've ever seen anything like this before. Or I, I think I've heard of things like this, but I've never seen anything like what you guys are doing outside of maybe stuff on TV. Right. Again, as a detective of enthusiasm, that's not super excited words like, oh, wow, this is really cool. How are you guys doing this? And you guys made all this. Whoa. Right. But it's definitely in the middle of the road where you want to it's pro continuing the, the conversation, but it is. Um, you have to meet them at their level of enthusiasm. Well, yeah, you know, we're, not everybody's on TV. Shucks. <laughs> um but we we love you know um having a wide and diverse you know people who decide to to participate and that's awesome um action words really simple you know overly enthusiastic um action words is oh my gosh i want to do this how do i do this right um recently we had a family join our fighter practice and it was just kind of happenstance but we also had the ability to, you know, hand out boffer swords accordingly for the, the, the children who were, you know, interested in, um, and, and to handle those different levels. But the action words that led them to that was, this is really awesome. We saw you guys really talking to each other about being safe. We overheard that. Wow. We'd love to know more. Like, it would be so cool to, to, to kind of jump in. Is this something we can jump in on? And that was their language. So we didn't have to be a great detective of enthusiasm. I mean, when you hear language like that, you're like, yeah, that's awesome. But if we were to replay that scenario and tone down their language a little bit and kind of unpack it, they had a bunch of really great keywords there of, um, like, let's say the way the language was toned down to, we, we overheard you guys talking about safety and padding your helmets. That's, that's really cool. We, we heard about that on like the NFL, right? And so it wasn't a question. It was just a sentence. But wow, is that a great jumping off point, right? To, to be like, wow, so you watch the NFL. That's really cool. You're, you, you've been hearing about helmet safety. That's excellent, right? Like, gosh, tell me, tell me more. Um, do you, do you want to see all our helmets? Like, 
Um, action words can also be toned down in not just the word selection, not just their tone, but also in how they are describing the action there, right? So we'll, we'll use a lot of language that can really show how we're feeling about something, right? And action words easily turn into those prototype, prototypical excited words, like, I want to, I want to hit people with six, woo, let's do it, right? But very rarely do we hear that from a newcomer. Very, what we do hear from newcomers are action words like, that, wow, that reminds me of this. And, and then the thing that they're talking about could be Xena, could be Tomb Raider, could be, you know, um, 300, right? And, and even though prototypically, like if you were to look up the definition of an action word, those aren't action words. If when we are detectors of enthusiasm, those are action phrases to us that are like, yeah, that, that's 100%. Um, I, th there are historical parts of all of the things that you just labeled the, that that uh, interest, not just you, but me and, and, and everyone, right? Like that's, yeah, that makes a lot of sense for sure. Um, and meeting them at that action and, and where they're telling you their story as to why they want to have that action with this group is, is super important. Um, so, Valdrick, we were just going through and finishing up being a detective of enthusiasm and the scenario being... Mm -hmm. um, you are brand new, like you are a newcomer to practice and you have seen this newcomer. Um, what are some of, I, I know that we need to move on to the next slide because I want to keep our time, but what are the, some of the best tips and tricks that you have from Meridies when you are trying to be a detective of their enthusiasm as a newcomer for approachability and, and you know, helping them kind of jump off a little bit? Yes, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear ah, you. There we go. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I had a lot of technical issues this morning. Uh, what I what I'm usually looking for when when people walk in the door, the very first thing I always want to make sure is that it's the uh, the welcome, welcome home. Come in, see what we're about. Let uh, don't worry about asking questions about anything, not just what we're doing here, but. But uh, we're all a bunch of geeks. We're all a bunch of kids. We have a wonderful toy here that we love playing with. And anything you want, anything you have questions, ask anybody. They'll be glad to talk about uh, about the thing they're doing. Um, so a lot of times when I'm looking at somebody and I'm watching their, their body language, I'm looking for a shine in the eye. Um, when they hear... Uh, clashing on the on the field and they look over do they you know do you, do you see that excitement do you see that body posture kind of liven up do you see them um you know a lot of the things you've already talked about in body language but a lot of times you can see someone's eyes and think about that christmas morning when they open the package and what are they slightly shunning themselves from? What are they intrigued by? Um, look for the the shine in their eyes when they when when you mention something. You know, if they look over at, at heavy and and they kind of they they're, they're kind of uh, when they hear the clashes they they uh, you know kind of uh, ease move away back, from that yeah. move back a little bit kind of close up but then they look over at the rapier and they go you know that little smile on the face um the the big thing is is that when i'm looking at a new person the putting them at ease when you put them at ease you start giving them things that they can relate to. Mm -hmm. We were all new ones. Uh, it's like a candy store. How can we help you start? What what brought you here? Where what was the uh, what what's your interest? What's your books? What what shows do you like? And I always think that 
when they're coming in instead of drowning them with everything that I know about the SCA, I want them to tell me what their flavors are. I want to get feedback from them first, get them talking, get them. And if, you know, sometimes it's not even about getting them talking. If they're the type of person that's a little bit closed off, hey, you know, we got some chairs over here. If you want to sit around and watch something, just just let me know. Find find that common ground to talk with them. For sure. For sure. Oh, yeah. Excellent. All right. So I think we're going to move on to being a warrior of kindness. So when we have decided to approach, right, where we have to engage politely, right? So being a warrior of kindness is almost the overarching umbrella of respect, right? Because when when we are kind, we have to operate with respect. Because um, if, if not, then it's not genuine, right? But the two here will be talked about in two separate perspectives, okay? The first perspective here is we do need to engage politely. And part of kindness is, hi, I'm blank, welcome to this, this thing. But then you're also encouraging them, just like um, what Valdrick had said, to tell them about their story, right? So very little about you, very little about necessarily the SCA upon meeting someone first time and or even second time as a, as a newcomer, you're trying to get them to tell you their story, right? And they're, and we're not talking about their life history. No, 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 just their story. Wow, I really liked Xena or Tomb Raider. And then I heard these clashing of, of you know, people hitting each other and, and wow, that's really cool, right? Like, when they feel comfortable enough to to tell you their story, that's great. Um, and then also to, to dovetail off of what Valdrick was saying, you know, being able to detect their level of, of enthusiasm also leads into, you know, if they're not wanting to talk very much, but more, but more just watch, that's great. Then your approach um you're you're wanting to approach to kind of you know keel back a little bit right it's it's not that you don't it's not like hey you know we don't see you it's it's no hi we do see you and you're here and we would love to do anything that we need for you right for sure but when you're ready feel free right and and when being that detective of enthusiasm you know if they're not if they are kind of giving you that close stance but they are still standing there right that's that mixed message so um once we do decide to approach right and if they are really kind of interacting with us we need to encourage them to do, have them tell us their story but then also we have to remember that we need to listen more than we speak right because when we listen they're going to tell us more about their interests. They're gonna tell us more about their concerns, right? Um, more about um, how they identify, which is super key about, uh, a key component to not only how do we respect them, but how do we treat them with the kindness that they deserve, right? So, um, and that kind of leads into the, the next one of, you know, when you do answer questions, right? You are going to want to answer them with how they identify, right? You're going to want to refer to them as how they prefer to be referred. That is a part of respect, but it is also, you know, part of the kindness of, of dealing with people who are human, right? Human to human interaction that preserves respect and is starts with kindness. Um, and then once the questions do start happening, you're going to have to use the most modern words possible, not the SCA lexicon. Okay, so for a really, really, really great example, and I totally apologize um, because I'm not entirely sure if that's spelled correct. Um, in the SCA lexicon, an autocrat is the person who runs this. So like Fergus Sabotha, he's our moderator. He's our autocrat. He's awesome. Um, love it. But if we were to say event steward, if you were to physically look up the definition of the word steward, that is not something that is commonly being used on the streets, right? And I'm not saying like street language at all, but I'm just saying that even in schools, if, if you were to 
talk about the word steward unless you were in certain uh, college level English classes, the definition that is written down versus how we are using it are different. But if I were to say the word, the phrase event coordinator, everyone knows what that is right now, 100% of the time. And so I know that there are other classes, amazing classes going on about kind of demystifying the SEA lexicon and talking about uh, talking to newcomers on the, the level that with the modern words that really help connect the concepts that we're trying to communicate. Um, but this is a, a gentle reminder that when we're talking to, to newbies, we have to be very aware of the language that we're using um, and something that Master Richard, when I was interviewing him for this uh, particular presentation, that he really ran home was there is it is always good to say, hey, I'm going to try to use, you know, language such that everyone can understand. But if you hear me say something that you don't understand, don't hesitate, you know, like raise your hand, you know, interrupt me, do anything you want to do. And I will it, to tell me that you don't you understand the, the word that I use and I will immediately, you know, stop and we'll, we'll get into what that word is. Right. Because sometimes we as, as people who truly love this organization, we don't even understand that we've integrated SCA lexicon into our normal everyday words. Right. For us, it's just things that we say, this is just normal, right? So we may not even be aware of it until someone like a newcomer goes, I, I have no idea what retumnal means, or I'm sorry, gorge. Um, I, I'm a basket hilt. I, I, I know what a hilt is, and I know what a basket, but you're using it in this phrase that I don't understand, right? Um, where we just may not know that we need to go into that. So, um, the last thing that I wanted to say before um, inviting uh, Valdrick and then kind of going back and forth was welcoming. What does your body language say, right? So when we're talking with newcomers and we've decided to approach, are we doing so with our arms folded? Are, are we approaching them in such a way where they may feel like they can't openly communicate with us is our hips and our our shoulders directed away from them in such a way that maybe it's hard to do that right like um a, a common example is on the sideline of a of a sports game you see two individuals who want to um they they're standing next to each other, but they're not talking. What do they look like? They're usually standing there. They're leaning on one hip. Their legs may be crossed at the angle, angles. Their arms are crossed. And they're standing shoulder to shoulder. Occasionally, they may say one or two words to each other. That's true. But it's not a, it's not a conversation. It's not a very welcoming body posture for, for anyone. Um, and so to shift that, when you see people standing on the sidelines of practices or at events and they're talking and they're really engrossed in conversation, you can tell that there's real active listening going on, which is something that we also need to, to kind of talk about um, during this class, is their, their hips and their chest alignment will be towards each other more than um, 45 degrees, right? Like, so um, it's not at a right angle, right? They're definitely almost going to be parallel or, or some variant of parallel, but definitely nothing more than 45 degrees. Um, and, and then communication really turns into this open and free uh, organic organism actually, right? That, that just develops over time between the two or three or four people. Um, so, uh, Valdrick, when, when you think of being a warrior for kindness, especially when like you're at an event or a demo or at a practice, how does that fit in with, with newcomers? You know, how should we be treating newcomers to, to really exemplify being kind? And, and then also then, right, the next one is obviously respectful. Well, um, so specifically at an event, one of the things that that um, 
everyone should probably remember. Uh, I'd like to point, uh, I'd like to give you a, a real world scenario. Like I said, I'm, I'm not a very smart person, so I can't really do the whole big T truths of the, of, of life. I have to have little bitty, smaller digestible bits. Um, when you're dealing with a new person, let's put some stuff to a real world scenario that they understand. Now you're mentioning like being at an event. So if you go into a job interview, and you sat down at a at a board meeting and everyone sitting there is wearing Armani suits. They're wearing uh, $1,000 neckties. They're wearing uh, jewelry that, that can buy the vehicle you drove up in. Are you going to be relaxed? Are you going to be easy to approach these people? Well... As a normal person, think of yourself as coming into the society and your first introductions are not a board meeting. Uh, your first events aren't, uh, you know, a, a weekend at a chateau for for investors meeting. Um, is it easy to go up to somebody and all their fine regalia and their fineries and just all of a sudden start talking to these people? Because remember, a lot of new people where are they coming from? Their reading, their education, their shows, the things that brought them to, to enjoy this reinforces the concept of knights and, and dukes and counts being world leaders, not just somebody that's over 15 or 20 people at a local, at a local group or not even over people over a certain aspect. Um, so when you start thinking about somebody coming up to someone um, at a fighter practice or a tournament and, hey, go talk to Duke so-and-so. Well, you and I know Duke so-and-so because that guy's been sitting over at our house playing D&D &D for five years. They're going to see somebody in thousands of dollars of armor. Remember, most everything that we're doing as recreationists is, is the tuxedos of the time. Based on artwork, bur burial finds, you're finding stuff that we're recreating the upper end stuff. So you're rarely ever going to be out at an event and being introduced to new people wearing the stuff that you and I are going to be wearing washing dishes tonight. So it, it's not just the posture, but remember uh, what you're doing that day. And it's not just the words for all of the acronyms and all of the, the quick things that we understand this person's in charge of this and that and other thing. But also when you're turning around and looking at this new person, you're wearing your best regalia and all of your awards and all of that stuff. And they, and you get in and somebody introduces you as uh, well, this is a, a, a Pelican and a Laurel of the society and, and a member of the board of directors that goes back to starting to make somebody feel in a ranked position and you're turning a fire hose on them. So um I also try to be mindful that when I'm when I'm getting new people in, that's always been one of the things about like bringing somebody to an event. Make sure that if you've got new people coming in, you're not blowing them away with their perception of what these ranks mean. Um, I find that I brought people over to my house and had classes going on at the house and fighting in the backyard and I'll have a new person come over and I'm like, oh, that's Bill and that's John. And, and they know quite a bit about fighting. And it's not just the fire hose effect of the whole spectrum of your presence, of your persona, of your, of your rank and your, Remember, even as peers, uh, peers subconsciously will carry themselves different. And I have actually been surprised with long-term society members who have been intimidated because I look people in the eye, I shake their hand, I try to speak clearly and, and remember that all of those things that a knight should do sometimes will scare the person walking in the door. So my two cents on top of that.
Mm, excellent. Thank you. All right. And our next and final thing that we're going to go over, right, is an ambassador of respect. Okay. So I have alluded to these three things are not necessarily mutually exclusive, right? They, they actually depend on each other. If we are being a detective of enthusiasm, then we are already starting on the path of being kind. And when we are being kind, genuinely, we are already communicating and um, we are determined to interact with respect and to help um, preserve respect for for everyone around us, right? So, what does it mean to interact with respect? That's a that's a really great question. Um, first and foremost, if someone is telling you their story, how do they identify? What are their interests? Their they're, they're talking to you and you are on the receiving end of whatever they are divulging, right? You need to stick to what they have told you. It is, it is not your time to be like, to, to run off on tangents, right? It is not your time to run on, off in a direction that they're not necessarily alluding to, right? This is your first point of contact, this is someone who is talking about how they have wound up standing there with you tonight watching this thing or asking these questions or talking with this group of people. And so we don't want to, even though we, we are super excited to have a newcomer, we don't necessarily want to take the bone that they just gave us and run around with it like a puppy um, all of the time. Right. There could be some newcomers who thinks that that would be really, really cool. Like, oh, my gosh, we're just so excited to have you and move from statement, you know, um, from group to group to group and get overwhelming. Like, even if someone says that they like that, they only like it to a degree. Right. And so we have to stick to what they have said. We have to stick to what they have told us. Um And that leads into connecting them with appropriate guides, right? So if, if we're talking there with an individual, it makes perfect sense that we, as gold keys, chatelines, people who just really care about our, our society, we don't know everything. I 100% do not know everything that Valdrick has done, or I do not know everything that Fergus the Botha has done, or anyone else who is on, on the call. I am not, I don't know, right? But what I can say is that there are appropriate guides to the interests of the people that we have. And that means that, if that means I mean, I need to ask questions, I need to uh, approach Fergus and, and approach Valdrick and be like, hey, this, this particular newcomer, um, I was just talking with them. They're super interested and they have a lot of, um, outside of the SCA experience in leather specifically being used for um, like scribal, right? And book binding and things like that. And I'm, I'm not really sure that I know a good resource for that or they have some questions. Do you guys know a good resource for that, right? Um, the other thing is, is sticking to what they have told you with regards to their boundaries and to how they identify. Um, newcomers very rarely, like, don't get me wrong, after they're integrated a little bit and um, there's always this moment of, oh my gosh, I want to do all of the things right now, right? Um, and a lot of the, the feedback given is, oh, pull back from that. But before that, newcomers don't necessarily want to get thrown into stuff. There could be very anxiety provoking. Right. Um, a really good example of stuff that has happened that we've seen in, in our kingdom and that we're working on is, hey, you're a newcomer. Why? Somebody just puts a sword in their hand. Hey, we've got a pill over here. You want to go hit it? Like, let's go. Right. But it's that action of putting a sword in their hand and not not listening to maybe what they're telling you, not, not maybe, but not listening to what they're telling you, right? So if they're, they're still asking you questions, if they're still um, 
talking to you about the concepts and they're not really giving you those action words of, oh, I want to pick that up or, oh, wow, I want to see how that feels, right? Um, putting a sword in their hand, that's probably not a great idea, right? That could feel presumptive. That could feel um, a, maybe a step too far. Another really great example that we've seen come up is, oh my gosh, we have this newcomer who, you know, came with a friend to an event. That's, that's excellent. This is their first real interaction with ESCA. Oh, well, that's awesome. We need somebody holding a banner or standing in court. So here, we, a newcomer, this will be a great experience for you. Let's go. Let's do this. Right. That's really presumptive. That's high anxiety to a, to a newcomer that can even be high risk. They don't know what to do or what they've just been asked to do. So they could say yes, but they don't want to let anyone down. Like there's there's so much that we can go through as to the feelings of that person. Had we had just taken a moment to listen and to hear what they have told us, if we even engaged on that conversation first before just randomly electing them to, well, not randomly, but maybe uh, misinterpreting the situation and then electing them to do this thing, there would be, uh, there'd be more conversation to be had afterwards, right? Like um, one of the really great examples that was given by Master Richard was instead of this idea or this concept of hey, come on over here, I've got something really cool for you to do, right? To be more respectful and say, why don't you follow me while I do this thing? You can experience it as I'm going through it and we can talk and we can have, you can ask me questions and if you feel comfortable, you can do it too, right? That's, ask them to shadow you or to come with you while you do blank, right? So that's also a really great way to introduce them to other people, like what Valdrick was saying. Um, individuals that may otherwise look unapproachable because they have these beautiful shiny coronets, right? Or um, they seem to be leading the the uh, the court, right? They could be kings and queens and and whatnot, but really they're very approachable people. It's just maybe you need to be introduced. You, you might need to be that moderator of that conversation to, to help interact, uh, help them interact. So I really love the perspective of asking newcomers, hey, would you like to come with me while I put my armor on? Would you like to come with me while I talk and we review, or I go and take a look at this ANS display that is over here? Um, you know, let me know if you have any questions like, hey, what, you know, and then continue the conversation going while you guys do that. Um, it's it's a it gives them a lot more freedom to to really set their boundaries as they need. Um, next is do not push newcomers into duty or competition showcases tournaments. Right. So part of that does files in to what I was just talking about when we inadvertently. It, or overtly push newcomers into competitions or showcases or tournaments right after they've been with us for a little bit. Um, there's a lot of negative consequences that could, even though we may not feel that they're negative, it could be negative to them. Um, good example. So getting put into competitions, but then not being able to uh, not navigating the space of, of feedback very well, right? Or um, as chatelines and as um, welcomers of newcomers, we want to make sure that when they decide to go up to that next level, that they feel supported to do such. And that's super important, right? Um, so direct if they are interested that they want to but don't push right if you see an amazing pretty that somebody has made and they're a newcomer and don't be like hey you need to put this into a competition right because there are there's some fallout there for that person that we may not be interested um we may not be assessing so all right um the last thing that I wanted to talk about is a, one of the biggest things of respect that can be the easiest things to communicate is just following up, right? Just the act of, of the first time that they show up to practice and then the second time that they show up to practice or the third time and then always being sure that you follow up with them and that you're carrying on 
and you remember the story that they told you, right? The, the, their identity, the, the things that interest them, right? You're, you're following with the, up, up with them on a personal level, but then also just, you know, from a, an SCA perspective, like, Hey, you're still, you're still here. Cool. That's awesome. How are you doing? Right. Um, I know we don't have a ton of time left, but Valdrick, what do you from from being an ambassador of respect? Um, what what didn't I hit on? What do you want to go into a little bit? Because I know we have a little bit of Q&A that we want to get into as well. So my, my advice just is what I what I try to think about in in introducing the society for new people. There is no one way. There is no one set of people that all your answers are going to be good for. <clears throat> what I what I had thought of for a long time, for many years, I've been in 30 years, and I listened to uh, what put people off. And I think about those things that, that came close of causing me to lead the society, especially in those first few years. Um, instead of selling the society to anybody or, or, showing how great it is my goal tends to be teaching a newcomer enough about the society for them to be able to make the decision if this is where they want to be at it is everybody's responsibility first and foremost especially after covid make the society fun help them have fun introduce them to people that will will help them learn to find their thing. The best advice I think to give new people that is to explain not only the things we do right, but explain some of the things we do wrong. Don't worry about ha uh, about your answer being, I don't know. Follow it up with, let's go find somebody that, that can answer that question. Show them the way of, of participating the way of finding their own answers and their own answers will help them a whole lot better than what we conceive to be that answer. Um, introducing people to uh, all of the stuff, but remind them you don't have to have all the stuff. I have a spiel that I give new people. We all do. And one of the first things that I actually tell people is participate at your own level. If you want to be that person that has a period tent, period clothing, period garb, the, the specific everything down, you will find a place for that. But the society is also big enough to where you want a set of armor and and to show up at a fighter practice every now and then and have a place to, to hang out with some folks. We got that also. The, the society is just that. It's a society and it's large enough to where you don't have to do all the things that I think is cool. Let me help you find the things. Let, let me understand what you think is cool and let me help you get to that point. Yeah, I really me, like. Yeah. Oh, sorry, go for it. I, I, I was just going to quickly say, I really like the emphasis of the respectfulness of them getting to direct their own interaction, them getting to direct their choice on whether or not to participate in the SCA, you know, because um, you're right. It's not a sales thing. It's this is the best of us. And this is the, the, this is what, what the society is. And you're right. It's a lot of fun, but how do we integrate your unique perspective and identity into this? If you want to, which I love. 